Prime Minister Modi to inaugurate the submarine cable connectivity for Andaman and Nicobar Islands today via video conferencing. The high-speed broadband connectivity to bring in the much-needed development in the strategic islands. Prime Minister Modi interacts with the BJP workers of Andaman and Nicobar, says 12 islands of Andaman and Nicobar chosen for the expansion of the high-impact projects related to seafood, organic products and coconut-based products. Forty-two bodies retrieved so far from landslide site in Kerala's Iduki district. The NDRF and the fire service personnel continue the search operations in the area. Victims are mostly the estate workers and their kin. India's COVID-19 recovery has crossed the historic peak of 1.5 million. The Union Health Ministry says COVID-19 infection still remains concentrated in 10 states with more than 80% of the new cases. In Lebanon, clashes erupt at protests demanding justice over 4th of August Beirut explosion to government ministers resign. The international community pledges aid for Lebanon. Hello and good morning. You're watching Doordarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli. A top story: Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the submarine cable connectivity for Andaman and Nicobar Islands today via video conferencing. High-speed broadband connectivity for the Andaman and Nicobar Islands will boost will give a boost to e-governance, tourism, and information technology in the islands. Let's take a look at this report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the submarine optical fiber cable connecting Chennai and Port Blair on 10th August. The submarine cable will also connect Port Blair to Swaraj Dweep, Little Andaman, Kar Nicobar, Kamorta, Great Nicobar, Long Island and Rangat. Bharat Sarkar Dwara Andaman ke liye Chennai se undersea cable jo connect ho raha hai uske liye sare Andaman ke dipwasi Bharat Sarkar ke and particularly Manya Pradhan Mantri ji ke हृदय से कृतज्ञ है क्योंकि उन्होंने जब वो 2018 के दिसंबर मंथ में यहाँ आए थे अंडमान में इसकी आधारशिला रखी थी और 20 साल से जो अंडमान के द्वीपवासी सपना देख रहे थे वो अब पूरा होने जा रहा है और उन्होंने जब अपने भाषण में ये कहा था कि अंडमान के लोगों को भी चेन्नई और दिल्ली जैसा सुविधा मिलेगा स्पीड वाला इंटरनेट मिलेगा तो लोगों को ये एक सपने जैसा लगता था कि इतना 2300 किलोमीटर की दूरी तय कर कर ऑप्टिकल फाइबर केबल कैसे डाला जाएगा समुद्र के माध्यम से लेकिन रिकॉर्ड समय में 1224 करोड़ की लागत से यह परियोजना पूरा हो चुका है द न्यू नेटवर्क विल एनेबल डिलीवरी ऑफ फास्टर एंड मोर फीजिबल मोबाइल एंड लैंडलाइन टेलीकॉम सर्विसेज टू द एंडमैन एंड निकोबार आइलैंड्स एट पार विद अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री About 2,300 kilometers of submarine OFC cable has been laid at a cost of about 1,224 crore rupees. Submarine optical fiber cable link will deliver bandwidth of 2 into 200 Gbps between Chennai and Port Blair. Submarine optical fiber cable link will deliver bandwidth of 2 into 100 Gbps between Port Blair and the other islands. 4G mobile services, which were constrained due to limited backhaul bandwidth. Provided via satellite will also see a major improvement. Very happy about it because uh, we will be getting high-speed internet because of which uh, not only students like me, many other students will be able to continue with the research work. I wholeheartedly thank Honorable Prime Minister of India for the inauguration of Chennai Andaman and Nicobar Islands submarine cable system, which is going to be inaugurated on 10th of this month. It would surely connect many people, like our parents and the children, students and the teachers, and the people to the administration. The foundation stone for this project was laid by Prime Minister Modi on 30th December 2018 at Port Blair. 
Enhanced telecom and broadband connectivity will boost tourism and employment generation in the islands, given impetus to the economy and raise standards of living. Better connectivity will also facilitate delivery of e-governance services in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. DD India. And uh, Prime Minister Modi virtually interacted with the BJP workers from the Andaman and Nicobar Islands last evening. He expressed confidence that the high-speed broadband connectivity that will be launched will help the people of the islands to have a virtual connect with other parts of the country. He said everyone will be able to avail the benefits of all the kinds of online services amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I have the अंडमान निकोबार द्वीप में बच्चों की पढ़ाई लिखाई बैंकिंग और दूसरी सेवाओं में ऑनलाइन सुविधा का ज्यादा से ज्यादा लाभ मिलना संभव हो पाएगा आपको भी और अंडमान में टूरिज्म और दूसरे व्यापार कारोबार से जुड़े साथियों को भी इस तरह वर्चुअली देश और दुनिया से जुड़ने में अब कोई समस्या नहीं आएगी and the Prime Minister also said that 12 islands of Andaman and Nicobar have been chosen for the expansion of the high-impact projects. The Prime Minister said that in Andaman and Nicobar, the government is going to lay emphasis on industries related to seafood, organic products and coconut-based products. He said the entire nation needs to progress for the development of new India. The Prime Minister asserted that the government's work should reach out to everyone. नए भारत की रक्षा सुरक्षा और समृद्धि के लिए भी अंडमान निकोबार की व्यापक भूमिका है इसी को समझते हुए 2017 में ही आइलैंड डेवलपमेंट एजेंसी का गठन किया गया था जिसमें सभी महत्वपूर्ण स्टेक होल्डर्स को शामिल किया गया इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट स्कीम्स के इस पूरे क्षेत्र में एमएसएमईस और दूसरे उद्योगों को प्रोत्साहित किया जा रहा है यह हमारे देश का सौभाग्य है कि हमारे पास अलग-अलग हिस्सों में अलग-अलग चीजें हैं जिनको हम विकसित कर सकते हैं जैसे अंडमान और निकोबार में से सी फूड हो ऑर्गेनिक प्रोडक्ट्स हो कोकोनट बेस्ड प्रोडक्ट्स हो इनसे जुड़े उद्योगों को हम बल देने वाले हैं। Moving on now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will launch the Atmanirbhar Bharat Sapta today in line with Prime Minister Modi's vision for a self-dependent India with increased local manufacturing. Yesterday, the Defence Minister had announced that India will stop the import of 101 weapons and military platforms like transport aircraft, light combat helicopters, conventional submarines, cruise missiles, among others, on a staggered basis till 2024. The move is meant to give an impetus to domestic defence production. The Defence Minister said that the Defence Ministry is now ready for a big push to encourage the indigenous defence manufacturing in line with Prime Minister Modi's clarion call for an Atmanirbhar Bharat. And uh, moving on now to the updates, uh, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister E.K. Palni Sami spoke with the, his Kerala counterpart Pinaray Vujun and assured him of all the help in the rescue efforts after a m massive landslide killed at least 42 people near Munnar in Iduki district. In a message on his Twitter handle, Palni Sami said he had expressed his condolences about the tragic loss of lives and the damages caused due to heavy rain and landslides at Munnar and offered all the necessary support in the relief operations. The toll in the landslide that leveled a row of 20 houses of the estate workers has risen to 42 with the retrieval of more bodies from the rubble. The workers, mostly Tamils, have been working in the estates for several decades now. And several districts in Kerala are on a high alert following heavy rains across the state. The Med Department has issued a red alert in Kannur, Kozikod, Vainar, Malapuram, Iduki and Alapur districts. Except the state capital, Tiruvannantapuram, orange alert has been issued for other districts. Many rivers in Kerala are in spate. Several houses were fully or partially damaged in the coastal and low-lying areas. Several families have been shifted to flood relief camps. 
Forced loose gates of the Pampa Dam in Patamatita district have been raised slightly as the inflow into the dam's reservoir is increasing. The fishing boats brought from Kollam have been kept ready in Rani, Tiruvalla and Pantalam towns to evacuate people. Many areas in these places were inundated in 2018 when the shutters of the dam were opened without a prior warning. With many smaller dams in the state receiving heavy rainfall in their catchment areas, the authorities have warned people living along the river banks to remain vigilant and move to safer places. And in Bihar, the flood situation remains critical as the flood water spread to some new areas. More than 74 lakh population spread over 1,232 panchayats in 125 blocks of 16 districts are facing the wrath of floods. 23 teams of the NDRF and the 10 teams of the SDRF are engaged in relief and rescue operations. According to the State Disaster Management Department, 23 people have so far died in the flood-related accidents. Seven relief camps are being run where over 11,000 people are sheltered. The medical teams are deployed in the affected areas. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and his cabinet colleagues are constantly visiting the flood-affected areas to take a stock of the situation. River Ganga is below the danger mark all along its course in Bihar except Kahilgaon where it is 17 centimetres above the danger mark. The Met Office has predicted uh, light rain in the catchment areas of all the rivers in Bihar today. And moving on now to the COVID-19 updates, the infections of the virus still remains concentrated in 10 states that contribute more than 80% of the new cases. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in a series of tweets said that India's COVID-19 recovery is across the historic peak of 1.5 million. The recovery of over 15 lakh has been made possible because of the policy of testing aggressively, tracking comprehensively and treating efficiently. Better ambulance services, the focus on standard of care and the use of non-invasive oxygen have given the desired results. And uh, let's now take a look at the worst COVID-19 affected states across the country. Maharashtra tops the list with about 12,248 new cases recorded in the last 24 hours. The state now has a total of 5,15,332 cases of COVID-19. Besides that, 13,348 patients have been discharged and 390 COVID-19 deaths have been reported in the state yesterday. In the national capital, Delhi, a total of uh, 1,300 positive cases were recorded in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of positive cases to 1,45,427. The total active cases remain at 10,729. Besides that, 1,225 patients have been discharged while 13 deaths were recorded yesterday. Meanwhile, Goa witnessed the highest spike yesterday with 506 people testing positive for COVID-19 in a single day, bringing the total number of cases to 8,712 and a number of active cases to 2,642. In Tamil Nadu, the total number of COVID-19 cases stands at 2,96,901 as 5,994 persons have tested positive for COVID-19 in the state in the last 24 hours. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has lauded the contribution of the states in popularizing e Jeevni, the telemedicine platform rolled out by the Health Ministry. While presiding over a review meeting with the states and union territories, the minister said in a landmark achievement, the National Telemedicine Service has completed more than 1,50,000 teleconsultations. The service is aimed at enabling patients to doctor consultations from the confines of their home as well as doctor-to-doctor -doctor consultations. Telemedicine ko जन जन तक पहुंचाने की दृष्टि से और उसके माध्यम से देश के दूर दराज के इलाकों में भी जो हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर्स बनाए गए हैं उनके माध्यम से गरीब लोगों को जहां एक तरफ प्रिवेंटिव और प्रोमोटिव हेल्थ की सुविधाएं उपलब्ध कराई जा रही हैं हमने इसको जब रिव्यू किया तो देखा कि इस दौरान भी 
डेढ़ लाख से ज्यादा कंसल्टेशन स्पेशलिस्ट के देश के गरीब लोगों को निशुल्क मिल चुके हैं यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ माइक्रो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम एंटरप्राइजेज नितिन गडकरी हेल्ड इन इंटरक्शन विद द मेंबर्स ऑफ द भारतीय उद्योग व्यापार मंडल ऑन थर्टी नाइन्थ नेशनल ट्रेडर्स डे addressing the group of traders the minister said that india's fight on the economic front is as important as the fight against covid-19 he added that the fund of funds for the msmes would now be of 50000 crore rupees the minister also said that with the foreign investment in the msme sector it will give a boost to both the liquidity and the employment opportunities humne ye tay kiya hai ki hamare msme ko ab fund of fund 20000 crore ka humne diya hai वो पचास हजार करोड़ होगा और एमएसएमई कैपिटल मार्केट में जाएगी और कैपिटल मार्केट से अपना पैसा खड़ा करेगी मैं कुछ दिन पहले अमेरिका के करीब सत्रह हजार इन्वेस्टर के साथ मेरा इंटरेक्शन हुआ दुबई में जो बीस एक हजार इन्वेस्टर के साथ इंटरेक्शन हुआ ऑस्ट्रेलिया के साथ हुआ यूके के इन्वेस्टर के साथ हुआ और मैंने एक बात देखी है कि सबसे अच्छे रिटर्न दुनिया में कहीं मिल सकते हैं तो हिंदुस्तान में मिल सकते हैं और इसलिए हमारे एमएसएमई में हमारे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में बड़े प्रमाण पर फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट आएगी तो हमारे देश में लिक्विडिटी बढ़ेगी और लिक्विडिटी बढ़ेगी तो रोजगार बढ़ेगा द मिनिस्टर आल्सो सेड दैट वी हैव टू एकम्पलिश द मिशन ऑफ मेकिंग इंडिया अ फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी एंड वी हैव दैट पोटेंशियल वी हैव यंग टैलेंटेड एंड स्किल्ड मैन पावर the minister stressed on making efforts towards a digital india hum aisa desh banana chahte hain jahan transparency ho fast track decision making process ho digitalized administration ho corruption free system ho aur decision making process fast ho aur aise desh ko banane ke samay kafi prayas hum kar rahe hain dheere dheere nishchit roop se kafi sudhar ho raha hai aur isme hamara fayda bhi hoga hum infrastructure acha develop kar rahe hain acche road bana rahe hain अच्छे जलमार्ग बना रहे हैं रेलवे में विकास कर रहे हैं हम लोग पावर अभी 24 घंटे मिलती है टेलीकम्युनिकेशन में अब सब पूरा डिजिटलाइजेशन हो गया है एक तरफ गांवों तक हमारा डिजिटलाइजेशन हो गया है हमारी आईटी की लाइन वहां तक पहुंच गई है अब इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी और बायो टेक्नोलॉजी का जमाना है और डिजिटलाइजेशन के ऊपर ई मार्केट की सुविधा प्राप्त हो रही है And moving on now to the updates on the Kozhi Kode air crash. 115 persons injured in the mishap at the Calicut International Airport at Karipur are currently undergoing treatment at various hospitals in Kozhi Kode and Malappuram districts. Of these, 14 persons continue to be critical, while 57 persons have been discharged after treatment. The state police have formed a 30-member team to carry out a probe into the tragic incident. The mishap took place on Friday evening when an Air India Express flight from Dubai overshot the runway at the Calicut International Airport and fell into a valley. The tragic accident has claimed 18 lives. And the Union Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri has recommenced the updates related to Vande Bharat mission with a tribute to the 18 people who lost their lives in the Kozhi Kode air accident. He said the grace with which the people of the town and their airport have faced the tragedy is a lesson in human resilience and spirit. He informed that 6063 stranded Indians returned from across the world yesterday. In some other news now, the World Lion Day is being celebrated today with an aim to conserve and spread awareness about the big cats and the declining population. people and environmentalists have come together on this day every year to celebrate the mighty lions on this day is a report the lion has always been the most revered of the big cats Movies like Lion King immortalize the character Simba, a young cub, and intrigue many into the lives of lions, the majestic cats who are now restricted to only parts of Africa and India. Each year on 10th of August, World Lion Day is celebrated, where environmentalists around the globe try to bring awareness to the declining population of lions. India. 
has recorded a 29% increase in the population of Asiatic lions living in Gujarat's Gir Forest. In the past five years, with their population going up from 523 in 2015 to 674 in 2020. A total of 208 Asiatic lions are housed in 31 Indian zoos across the country and have been a star attraction in promoting conservation awareness and outreach for visitors, especially children, that are able to see these magnificent creatures up and close in the zoos. The population estimation of Asiatic lions is conducted at an interval of five years. Today, Asiatic lions are present in Gir National Park and Sanctuary and constitutes 53 talukas covering a sprawling expanse of around 30,000 square kilometers, which is termed as the Asiatic lion landscape. The government has given high priority for conservation of this flagship species and has initiated a dedicated lion conservation project, habitat improvement, disease control and enhancing protection mechanism have been given due priority in lion conservation. Tapush Patacharya's report, TD News, Delhi. And moving on now to more updates uh, from Lebanon, which continues to grapple with the aftermath of the explosion that was caused due to 2,750 tons of highly explosive ammonium nitrate. Besides that, the intensive debris cleaning operation, violent protests swept the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Protesters called on the government to quit over what they say was negligence that led to Tuesday's explosion. Protesters blocked the parliament road, following which police had to fire tear gas to try to disperse rock-throwing protesters. The protesters also broke into the housing and transport ministry offices and amidst the crisis to government ministers resigned, saying the government had failed to reform. Meanwhile, the members of the international community have also called for support and action. A team of the Russian emergency workers, including medical equipment, a field hospital, was sent to Beirut earlier this week to provide humanitarian aid. French President Emmanuel Macron, who visited Beirut on Thursday, called on the world powers to put aside their differences and support the Lebanese people, saying the country's future was at stake. And speaking at his weekly address in St. Peter's Square, Pope Francis urged the people of Lebanon to work together for a new free and strong coexistence. And uh, taking a look now at the global updates on COVID-19 from across the world, the number of COVID-19 cases recorded worldwide has crossed two crores, while over 7,33,000 people have lost their lives so far. The total recoveries worldwide stand at over 1 crore 28 lakh. The U.S. and Brazil remain the worst affected countries in terms of COVID-19 infections and fatalities. Starting with the U.S., the country has suffered the most from the pandemic with more than 51.98 lakh cases and over 1.65 lakh fatalities so far. The U.S. has registered over 47,000 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. And uh, Brazil, uh, the second worst affected country after the U.S., the country has so far registered over 30.35 lakh cases of COVID-19 and over 1 lakh deaths. Sao Lucas Hospital in southern Brazil is taking part in the large-scale trials for a vaccine to prevent COVID-19. It is monitoring 852 volunteer healthcare workers as part of its participation, along with 11 other centers across the country in the research. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. Thanks for being with us.